Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, back with another Black Desert video. Today's video, we're going to be giving you an overview of the release version of the Sage. So we'll go through the different mechanics that apply to this class, some combo overviews, and generally a lot of information that will help you to understand how to play this class effectively. The combos and things you're going to see in this video are not necessarily perfect or the best things. In fact, you can't really even call them combos. It's going to be a mechanical overview so you understand how to play the class and understand what your skills do. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a really solid understanding of how to play it. Anyway, quickly before we get into the rest of the video, if you're new to my channel, new to Black Desert, or you have been watching videos on my channel already and you still have not subscribed yet, please consider it. Helps grow my channel, pushing for 100k this year. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so I'm going to be brutally honest with you right off the bat here. This class is a pain to level up up until the point where you hit 56, complete your succession quest line, and unlock the skill Prime Rift Chain. It just doesn't feel very fluent until you unlock that. So if you're struggling with it and not enjoying it, I, I'd urge you to play it through and at least get to the point where you unlock this skill. So I'll show you the combos that use this later, but right off the bat while you're leveling up this character, you're going to make a lot of use out of the spammable abilities Spatial Fisher into Azor's Fist. This is a huge accuracy buff. It allows you to grind in areas that are actually above your level because of the accuracy buff it gives you. Azor's Fist is a huge DP down and a lot of damage as well. These two skills chain after each other, so you just hit Shift L and B and then F. It's like really, really straightforward. You just hit Shift L and B and then you hold F. Really easy, really slow, not too crazy. You saw the keystrokes I put over there on the screen. So that little combo has a five second cooldown, so it should be up pretty much all the time when you're going to pack to pack. If it's not for some reason, you have a few giant AoEs that you can spam that are pretty quick cooldowns. They're Ator's Mark, which is SE. This ability right here, you call a fist from the sky and slam it into the ground. Illusion Expansion, which is Shift F, and ultimately you also unlock a flow, which is holding F after it. Shift F, and then hit F again to punch. Spatial Collapse, which is SF on the keyboard, so SF, and you call a big AoE down. And finally, Ator's Energy, which is another giant AoE that you can use, which is SLMB. And then if you smash RMB like once a minute, you can use this skill as well. So that's SLMB. And then after the skill is used, if you press RMB, it does a big call from the sky. That skill is actually really nice to clear out huge amounts of packs in the early game. But that's really it, guys. You're just going to hit Shift LMB, F, and then rotate through those off cooldown. And that's pretty much it for your early game leveling up to 56. But once you hit 56, complete your succession quest line and get Prime Rift Chain, a whole new world of damaging opportunities presents itself. So this is going to be the first major mechanic you need to learn for this class, and it's going to be teleporting your damage with you. So the easiest skill to demonstrate this with is going to be Spatial Collapse, which is this one right here. It is S plus F on the keyboard. So S and F on the keyboard. Cast this big AoE that drops from the sky. You saw the little timer that popped up right there. So when I press the skill, you see the timer that pops up right there. If you hit Shift plus W on the keyboard while that timer is up, you will teleport forward using the ability Prime Rift Chain. Then Spatial Collapse will cast at the end of it. So if I press S plus F, hit Shift W on the keyboard, my player will drop it when they get to the end of it. So to show you that once again, we hit S plus F, then Shift W, and then at the end it casts. I don't have to put any keystrokes in at the end of that. Once again, just to show you a third time, it is S plus F, Shift W, and then that's it it automatically casts at the end of it. Go ahead and practice this like in a field or in a road or something until you get a good handle on it. The timing is a little confusing. It's just SF plus shift in a directional key, and then you will cast it at the end of the ability. So once you've got that skill down, we're gonna move on to some of the more difficult timing ones. And the next most difficult time one is going to be the skill Ator's Energy. So you can do the same thing with this skill. If you hit SLMB, you see there's a cast time. Just like with that previous skill, you can cancel the cast time and teleport it to a location. So before you arrive at your mob pack, you can cast this ability by hitting SLMB, then cancel it by using the forward dash, and when you pop out, your character will use it. So go ahead and practice that one a few times. Once again, it's just SLMB, then Shift W, you'll carry it with you, and when you come out, you'll cast it. You see I'm putting no additional buttons in after I come out of the teleport. There is one more skill you can do this with, and it was with SRMB, which is the ability Realm of Anguish. So that is back plus right mouse button on the keyboard. So I've hit S plus RMB, then Shift W, it casts that ability when you come out of it. So you can deliver this AoE skill as well. You're going to want to keep practicing these until you get a good handle on it, and then we're going to show you the next advanced level of that, like two seconds video time, but really make sure you have a good handle on this before you continue along. And now that you're continuing along, we're going to do the extended cast for the ability Spatial Collapse. So Spatial Collapse has a flow, which is Finishing Touch. This flow from Finishing Touch can be extended infinitely as long as you have enough stamina. So what do I mean by that? Let's head back a little bit further. 
if I go ahead and cast the ability SF, right, which is Spatial Collapse, S plus F, teleport forward, you can see that I come up short, and I can cast the flow by holding F, which once again is the flow finishing touch, that is F after using Spatial Collapse, so SF, and then if I hold down F, you see it does that second ability where it punches up. You can see that if I start way back here and do that, I don't quite reach all of the mobs. I'm, I'm not quite there. I hit that first scarecrow at the front, but I didn't hit everything. So you can double teleport and carry that second ability, the finishing touch after spatial collapse. So let's show you that right here. So we're gonna hit SF, teleport forward. Then after that cast, we'll teleport forward again and then hit F. And you see that it casts the finishing touch a second time out there. So this one is going to take some serious timing. You have to make sure you're stopping touching the keys exactly when you saw me doing it. So we'll run it back one more time here. And feel free to use the controls in the bottom corner of the YouTube channel here to slow down the speed so you can see the keystroke timing here. So once again, SF, Shift W, let go, Shift W, F, to cast that ability outside of it. So after you've practiced that combo a few times, you can actually do this from even further away. So I'm gonna go way the heck over here. I don't even know if it's gonna reach this far, but we're gonna find out. So we are way over here and we're gonna get to those training dummies over there, you ready? So we'll cast SF, Shift W, it'll drop the SF. Shift W, we'll go over here just for fun, Shift W, and then pop. So as long as you have stamina, you can continue to dash around and then bring that F with you. The F being flow finishing touch. Now you can also do the same thing by letting Spatial Collapse go through at the start and then teleporting and delivering the finishing touch. So if we hit SF, let it go, then teleport forward, we can teleport forward again, and then hit F, and it'll bring it with it. So any little variation or permutation of that you can do. Now there is one more teleport chain that you can do, and that is chaining Aetor's energy into Atomasia. I'm gonna be honest, this one really isn't as spectacular as what we've been doing, but it is another chain you can do. If you hit SLMB, teleport forward, and then mash R on release here, you see you go right into the ability there. That's pretty much it with that one. Nothing too crazy with it. It's a huge cooldown skill, but it does a lot of damage, so it is an option in your kit. So right now there should be a clip of me running it with this teleporting system that you can see. And as you can see in lower end grinding spots right here, you can just basically go pack to pack to pack to pack to pack to pack, casting all sorts of different abilities. It's so fluent that it almost makes you wonder if you were even playing the same class for the first 56 levels. But anyway, practice this until you got it down pretty well, because you're going to be making a lot of use of it as you play through. Alright, so now that you've mastered the ability to teleport and deliver damage, we're going to talk about our skills that provide us buffs and debuffs that we're going to slot into our combos here. So starting off with the one we've touched on earlier, it is our big old accuracy buff on the ability Spatial Fissure, and ultimately Prime Spatial Fissure. This ability gives you an 18% all accuracy rate buff for 10 seconds. Definitely going to want to slot it into your different rotations and endgame PvE content. And even in early game PvE content, it's great with the huge amount of damage that it does. A couple steps below that, we're going to see the ability Ator's Mark. This ability does a large amount of damage, 100% crit rate, and it has an 18% evasion debuff. So once again, it helps to create a huge accuracy discrepancy between whatever you're fighting. It's probably one that you're going to want to slot into your rotations, and as an added bonus, it cancels out of pretty much every single skill in your kit. There's a few exceptions where it won't, but you can basically get rid of the cast time on this by casting it after most abilities. We then have three DP debuffs built into the kit. So those are going to be Prime Aetor's Fist, which also is an ability that flows pretty well after most skills. Prime Spatial Collapse, which is the same amount of DP reduction. This is the ability that we've been using that teleport canceling with. So it's a great opener for a lot of combos for that DP debuff from long range. And the ability Realm of Anguish, once again, is another 20 DP down that can be canceled using those teleport abilities that we were looking at a minute ago. So both are solid options for openers to get an early DP debuff on your target. So that's it for built-in buffs and debuffs with the kit. However, you do have one to note here on Ator's Energy. This is the only tier 3 add-on for the class. What is a tier 3 add-on? It is the maximum possible bonus that you can get. So if you're a PvE player like I am, you're going to want to have the extra damage to monsters slotted on this one. It's only got a 10 second cooldown, so it's pretty much up all the time you're going from pack to pack. And this is also another one of the skills that we used in our teleport cancels. So we did SLMB, teleported forward, and dropped this ability. So if you didn't want to lead off with the DP down debuffs from Spatial Collapse, you could instead lead with an AP up buff for yourself using this ability, Ator's Energy. And those are your primary buffs and debuffs that you're going to want to put early on in your different rotations. Okay, so now that we know our buffs and debuffs, and we know how to use our teleporting cancels to deliver these big damaging abilities to the target, we're going to look at some generic combos. 
These aren't the best possible combos you can use, these are just some examples to get you started. You already know how to use all these different teleport cancels now, and you'll probably be able to build your very own better combos. As a rule of thumb, this class doesn't really have combos, it's not like there's amazing animation cancels, other than hitting S plus E for the Ator's mark ability, the fist that drops down on all those people right there. Because that ability cancels out of pretty much everything, once again. So you can literally build a combo however the heck you want, there's no like set in stone things. Just think about intelligently applying your buffs and debuffs. So here's an example beginner one. We're going to start with SL and B, which is going to be Aetor's energy. We'll then move into Spatial Collapse, which is SF, to get a DP debuff. So this will give us our AP up, this will give us our DP down, increasing our damage. We're going to follow that with the flow of Finishing Touch by holding F. We'll then cancel that out using Aetor's mark. That'll provide a big evasion debuff to our target that we're fighting. And that'll be our initial little starting combo builder right here. It's going to apply all of our major buffs and debuffs onto the target, except for the accuracy self buff that we could get from using the ability Spatial Fissure, which is Shift L and B. So you could add that on at the end if you wanted to. Once again, you can just build combos however you'd like. But just to show you how that works, we're going to start over here. We'll channel S, L, and B to start. This is going to give us our 30 AP buff when we arrive. Then we'll press S, F. Hold F. S, E. And that's it. So that once again was using the abilities Ator's Energy, Spatial Collapse, and Ator's Mark. If instead of leading off with Ator's Energy, which is an AP buff, you wanted to lead off with a DP down, you could do the same thing with Spatial Collapse. So we could press SF, go forward, then channel into S, L, and B, channel into S, E after, and it's the same buff application, just starting off with a different ability. As far as why you would want to lead off with one over the other, it comes down to the protection that is offered to you when you arrive with the skill. If you channel Ator's Energy, which is S, L, and B, when you arrive at the target, you will see that you have Super Armor. If instead you wanted to use the ability Spatial Collapse, or for that matter if you wanted to use the ability Realm of Anguish, when you arrive you are not protected, so start the cast, go to the location, arrive, you have no protection on landing. So just think about what you're jumping into before you jump into it. Now after you arrive at your target, you have a few different options for DPSing. We already mentioned a second ago that if you use Spatial Fissure, you'll get an accuracy bonus, but this is also an unprotected skill. If instead you're looking for protection, you can use the ability Form Shift, which will provide you Super Armor, as well as the Recall, which will also provide you Super Armor on the way back with the ability. So let's just pretend that we hit Ator's Mark with SE. We could then hit W, R, and B, and as you can see, we get Super Armor through that whole little animation right there. So that was the ability Form Shift. So we can run back and forth using W plus R and B, just like that. If you don't care so much about protection, you can instead use Special Fissure, which is Shift L and B, and then we can chain F off of that if we'd like to, for more damage. If you wanted to continue DPSing, you could use the ability Illusion Expansion as well, which is Shift F, and then continue to hold F to cast its flow. And honestly, by that point, whatever you're fighting should be pretty darn close to dead. The Sage has a nutty amount of damage, and if it's not dead, by that time you should also have Spatial Collapse, Ator's Energy, and Ator's Mark off of cooldown. So that's pretty much it for PvE, build your combos however you like. Now if you're not interested in like learning how to play the class and just want to copy buttons from somebody else, I'll also be linking the Sage Discord in the description below. So you can just navigate over to this and go to the combo section of the Discord, and people are starting to post different combos in here, so you can check those out. There's also add-ons for skill add-ons that people are using. Feel free to give these resources a look. So I told you we weren't going to go too crazy with combos. Like I said, we're going to be applying the teleport features as well as which skills give us buffs, and that's how we'll build our combos. Once again, they do not flow perfectly. It's not like these skills are super combo intensive like a ninja or something like that. They're all kind of bulky and slow moving like a guardian. So anyway, that just leaves one category of skills left to look at here, and those are going to be the passives. First passive is accuracy as well as casting speed. Obviously take it as you unlock your different skills as well. The prime version of the skill provides you with magic AP, except for the last one, which is entirely up to you. I like to think that this provides me 100,000 subscribers when I unlock it. We then have the ability Ator's Eye, which is what allows us to go to Akman, Histria, Kratuga, or Sakraya. The ability Augmentation is unlocked at level 20 for a flat magic AP bonus of 20. Infinite Mastery and Skilled Hunter are the same as like any other class. And the ability Prime Overdrive is the stacking mechanic similar to the Guardian as well. This ability will provide you a casting speed of 1%, stacking up to 10 times as you cast abilities. So basically he ramps up kind of like a Guardian does, except with critical chance. Added bonus of this one, though, is that after you unlock his ability Prime Optimization, which I don't have unlocked right now, whenever you stack this passive, it reduces 5 seconds off the cooldown of Prime Optimization. Prime Optimization is your e-buff, gives you magic AP for 30 seconds, as well as a crit hit rate and crit hit damage bonus. You also get 15 seconds of super armor with this ability. 
So yeah, basically you just turn into an invincible little spell sling and son of a gun. There's also one more ability that I don't have unlocked here as well, and that is the ability Reset, which resets all of your skill cooldowns. It has a 10 minute cooldown now. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this video. So I do hope it gives you an overview on how to actually play this class, all the different cancels and teleport stuff that you can do. If it is going to help you, do let me know in the comment section below. Also, once again, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please consider it. Helps grow my channel and you stay up to date when new content comes out. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you at the next live stream over on Twitch, YouTube video right here, or wherever I happen to see you. Face.